Welcome back to Blender for Designers. And today we'll be creating this video. This is something I posted to Instagram. And actually you should follow me on Instagram. I've been posting every day for a couple months now. This by the way is a projection and it's super easy to do in Blender. And I kind of always want to do a better version. So, so here's the thing I actually created, uh, spoiler. And you may not need to make anything exactly like this, but it'll go over some interesting concepts around projection, and I talk about the compositor, and animation, and uh, rendering. So, let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is to create the pattern that we're going to use to project onto and to use as the background. So I'm going to go into Illustrator and I'm going to create a HD size image, which is 1920 by 1080. I'm actually using just their regular documents instead of their specific videos documents because the video documents puts all these guides in and it's super annoying. Draw the background here and I'm going to make it not quite black. I'm going to make it a nice dark and cool and gray. And it has to go to the entire screen. Right. All right. So that's layer one. Layer two, I'm going to put instead of dots, I'm going to put a cross. And the reason I haven't done grid or stripes is because Blender doesn't quite get them exact uh, in the exact spot that you need. So I'm going to do one. Copy, Command, Shift, V, and I'm going to rotate in place so you get a nice little cross here. That looks great. And then I'm going to group those together, and I'm going to move that over here. Yeah, as I said, the reason I'm doing crosses and not, uh, and or dots or something, is because if I did a grid, like, Blender wouldn't quite match up unless you go into orthographic mode, which I will explain later. But for now, we're just going to do this pattern because I want to do it. So I'm dragging the two of them across here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create what's called a blend. Blend make. And um, I think an object blend, blend option. So you don't want them to run all together, but if you can specify the steps, I can go down to like 40, and then I can actually see, you know, I can see exactly how many I have. 40 seems good, maybe, maybe a bit less. So you can do this kind of in real time. Yeah, seems good. Okay, great. And then I'm going to. Uh, Duplicate this, and then instead of going exactly, I'm going to go offset this by one, so they're right in the middle. I'm sure there's a better, easier way to do that. Alright, so then I'm going to grab these together, and I'm going to duplicate them like this. Yeah, not like that, like, yep. Then you hit Command D, continuously duplicate that, do as many times as you want. Select all, move it so it's framed up. And then I'm going to change the color. I'm going to hide everything first. Uh, I did a blue before, so let me do a nice little green. Make it nice and bright. That's pretty good. Get a nice little pattern there. All right, there we go. Great. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to export. Export as a PNG. And remember to use artboards. So it goes 19, 20, 10, 80. Otherwise, I'll just do the whole damn thing. And 72 DPI is what you want. Want art optimized. Um, for to get exactly 1920 by 1080. Great. So now let's open Blender. And for once, we're going to keep the default cube. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into front view, hit one. And then I'm going to, uh, I can never remember the code for this. So align camera to view. That's exactly. And then, so now we're, we're viewing the cube. I'm going to, uh, going to go to the camera and I'm going to actually set it uh, it's set as a 35 millimeter, which is pretty wide angle right now. I'm actually going to go ahead and set it in very telephoto, 135. And the reason I'm doing that is because the this projection works better the closer you get to orthographic view. In fact, I think it does it based in orthographic. And orthographic is essentially infinite focal length. But um, so basically, I don't want to do infinite focal length because I want some perspective, but I want to keep it pretty telephoto. So uh, G. Uh, ZZ again to dolly out. The camera goes in and out uh, in the Z axis. So uh, G ZZ, I'm gonna go. No, not G G ZZ. I'm gonna go further out, and then we're gonna rotate this cube however much we feel like. Um, so let's rotate it in X in Z a little bit. Uh, yeah, it's about that looks about good. And then rotate in X just a bit, and then let's rotate ZZ so you know we can tweak it. I want to show three sides on the front. So I'm going to zoom out again, or dolly out. It's not a zoom. So yeah, so you can see we're at pretty telephoto, um, but this should work nicely. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I'm going to hit N to bring up their tray. First, I'm going to save this. So 
I'm going to open a background image to here, and we're going to add an image. We're going to do it only on the camera and crosses 01. That was the one we just exported from Illustrator. So great. All right, so I'm going to bring this up a little bit. And so now what we have to do is we have to project these three faces onto the background. So let's let's bring up a UV image editor. Let's get rid of the T. And then so I'm going to open the image is already open because I used it for the background. So and we'll just project right onto it. There's no reason not to. So I'm going to go into the cube and then I'm going to I have the faces. So I'm going to select the front three faces. You can just, there's a lot of ways you can do this, but I'm just going to do it this way. Then I'm going to hit U, unwrap, project from view. And there you go. And then, of course, we'll need a material on here. Oh, yeah, by the way, we're in cycles. Um, we need a material on here, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to call this, yeah, there's already one. Uh -huh. We'll call this projection. And then we'll go to the node editor to make that actual an actual material. So we're going to go to materials go to use nodes and then right now it's a white material but what we want actually is not a diffuse but an emission because we want to have the same background as foreground so we're going to add a so we're going to get rid of the diffuse uh, so we want an emission shader but then we're going to add the texture to it so again it's the one texture we have Boom. And then what's really cool is if you go to, you can see texture, you can see it on there. But actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my background image. I'm going to take the opacity up to 100%. And then I'm going to go to material. And the thing is, you should be able to see it nearly perfectly, especially if you go on here to display and go to only render. So you can see a little bit of distortion in here, but it's really pretty close. Um, you know, as I said, it's not, it, it's never perfect unless you're an orthographic. All right, so now let's get this thing in some motion. Um, so right now, um, I want to do this, uh, let's do this six seconds and at 24 frames a second, so six times 24. By the way, you can do math in any of these uh, fields in Blender, which is super useful. Uh, so we're going to go to 144, and then what I'm going to do is I'm actually not going to rotate the cube itself. I'm going to rotate a, uh, an empty. Um, so I'm going to create one first, and actually let me let me just uh, so I can see the cube. Empty, plain axes, that's fine. And then I'm going to parent the cube to, oops, I want to do that the opposite way. I want to parent the empty, the cube to the empty. Great, so now when I rotate the empty, uh, I'll rotate the cube. So I'm going to set a keyframe for the rotation. You hit I to do that. Then I'm going to advance to the end, the last frame, which is 144. And I'm going to rotate that at 144, set it at 360. Then hit I again to set the keyframe. Remember to do that. And then there we go. See it rotate. It rotates all the way around. And then it kind of, um, and it's got a kind of a, a smoothing that goes in and out. And actually, I want to hold that smoothing on the other side. So I'm going to go to exactly the midpoint, which would be 72. Of course, I could say 144 divided by 2. And there we go, exact midpoint. And then I'm actually going to make that uh, 180. You'll see why in a minute. So I'm going to hit I. And this way, we can actually see, we're going to go to the graph editor here. And we'll be able to see, and again, you can drag, you can use your middle mouse button and mouse wheel just exactly like you do any other. So we see we have smoothing. We kind of roll out of zero and then roll into 360. So now I want to actually roll into 180. So we're going to rotate that, and then that's too smooth, so we're going to scale that down. And then I'll show you how that looks. Great, and then actually we can see that what that looks like with uh, material. You can see only have one side so far, and now that side's blank. But we're going to switch that in a minute. So I'm going to hit Alt-A to stop that. Go to 72. Go there, and then I'm going to do the same thing, project from view. I don't even need the UV image editor. So now we have both of them, and then I'm actually going to turn, I'm going to actually deselect that. And I think we still have only render, right. So, you know, we can kind of see it. 
going in and out. Now you might be thinking, hey, it looks great in the viewport. Why don't we just render the viewport? And it turns out we can just render the viewport. Remember, we can go and do this OpenGL animation, which basically just renders the viewport. But I want to do uh, one thing before we do that, and that is export a higher res version from Illustrator. So I'm going to cross is high res. So in this case, other, I'm actually going to do 144. I'm going to go exactly double. So this is a 4K image now instead of a, a 1080. The reason I'm doing that is once this rotates around, you know, the resolution you know, it's because projecting the resolution can go down a little bit. So I actually want to have that go up. So I'm going to go back into our material. So I'm going to go back into the node editor and I'm going to open the high res version. And it should pretty much look the same, which it does, which is good. One more thing I got to do is go to 100%. So we have 1920 by 1080. And then save that. I always save before I render. And then I'm going to go render, OpenGL render animation. Bloop. And you see it go. I'm going to go real time for now, and then I'm going to skip right at, at like, say, 30 frames. All right, so we are done. And if you're kind of wondering where that thing actually rendered to, um, that's actually right here. It's your output. Uh, you can set that whatever you want. Usually it's TMP. Um, which is actually fine because uh, we can go grab that. And actually, here's a little trick for you Macintosh users here. TMP is not super easy to find because if you go to your main hard drive, which is where it is, uh, you probably won't see it. But what you can do is you can, can Command Shift G and then you can go to the folder. You just type it right in there and you go. So that's how you can find a good hidden one. And then you can see they're all right here. They're kind of in a mess right now, but you can mod go to Date Modified. And then I'm going to bring up the tutorial folder. I'm going to say... Render 01. And I'm just going to copy everything that was just modified. It's about 7 p.m., so. Uh, we seem to have a little backup inside of TMP. So we're going to bring that all in there, and it's on a separate hard drive, so it's actually copy. And then this way, we can see it. And here's what that render actually looks like. And here's the sound it makes. Now, I'm going to do something else. All right, first of all, i got to get out, get back to the 3D view. This looks like the 3D view, but it's actually the render result. They look exactly the same. So then I'm going to go ZZ so I can actually see my cube. I'm going to be moving this. I'm going to, you know, I'm bored with cubes. I'm going to move this cube onto layer 2 because I want to try something else. And that something else is going to be a cylinder. So let's go back to the first frame. And then I'm going to add a cylinder. And then I'm going to move that cylinder into the empty, or parent it to the empty, control P. Parent to object. All right, so then I'm going to select the cylinder, and so that should be with inside, inside the empty here, along with the cube, although the cube is now hidden on layer two. So I'm going to rotate that in X, and rotate in Z slightly. Maybe rotate in Y just a little bit, just to have some fun. Great. And you can see since it's parented to the empty, it still rotates, which is kind of cool. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to project from the faces, just like we did with the cube. So I'm going to tab into edit mode and hit A to unselect everything. And then I'm going to hit B to just select the front faces. And we can just check if that worked. It appears to have worked. So I'm going to hit back, go back to zero to go back into my camera view. You don't actually need to have this up, but I wanted to show it to you guys. Uh, so I'm going to go to the UV image editor where we have, um, we have the crosses of one image and I'm going to project from view. And then I'm actually going to go tab out of edit mode. I'm going to animate all the way to, uh, what was it? 72, one, two. And then tab back in. And instead of selecting, I'm just going to hit select inverse so we get all the other faces. And then we're going to check those from view as well. I'm going to tab back out. And then, oh yes, and then we have to have a material on this thing. Luckily, we can use the exact same material. Oh, that's the world. Projection. All right, and let's see how that looks. We can actually go into material. Hold A again to animate. And that looks super odd, which I like a lot, actually. It's this kind of weird, weird thing. Really stretch there at the edges. Um, so I'm actually going to show you guys how to do this in cycles. So uh, obviously to cycles you need to do uh, Shift Z, and there it is rendering in cycles. 
uh, remember it's an emission, so it's just it's just straight up, and I have no um, environment map or anything like that. Um, but obviously, it's just rendering this part. So how are we going to get the background on there? Um, well, that's pretty easy to do. So what we want to do first is we want to make sure that we are uh, that we are doing transparent film. So okay, there we go already. Uh, you can see it actually looks pretty close because it's actually showing the uh, the background image. And then, um, so I'm going to do, I'm going to go into my node editor. Where did my node editor go? There it is. All right. And then I'm actually going to show you how to composite this into the background. Because right now, what happens, is, you know, you can see the background in 3D view, but if I do a render, it's just going to do a transparent PNG. And now, of course, you can composite another program like After Effects or even Premiere, but I'm going to show you how to composite this in Blender. So, um, Basically, we're going to go to the compositor, which is right here, hit use nodes. And then what we want to do is you want to get the background texture. So uh, input an image. And then we're going to open crosses. Remember, it's got to be the exact same dimensions as your frame. So this is happens to be the same dimensions. So I'm going to go to. Uh, color alpha over. So what we do is we put this image over this one. And then boom. All right, it turns out I got the order wrong on this and I did a whole render and oopsies. So here we go. This is the order it should be. So you can see that this, you know, so you go to say frame 30 and then you hit render and that's the correct. I should have checked that because frame one was been would have been the same anyway. So, well, whatever, we're going to re- We're going to re-render. Hit animation. Oh, and by the way, I also put a file output in there so I could render to my folder of choice instead of TMP. Not that there's anything wrong with TMP, but it overwrites. All right, so one thing I promised to do was to try to show you the grid. So I'm going to go back to my 3D view. And actually, I'm just going to go ahead and go on to layer two, where we have a cube. And we're in rendered mode. I do not want to be in rendered mode. So we see we have the cube again. And since the empty and the camera are already there on layer one, but they're still doing their thing, we can just leave the cube there. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get rid of this background image, and I'm going to add this grid image that I have. I have a grid 1080 and grid 4K. I'm going to do grid 1080 back here. Um, we're going to bring that to 100 percent we're going to go back to our materials actually i'm going to create a new material actually what i can do simply enough is just duplicate this so we'll call this grid projection great and then we just do uh, i have four craig k grid as well all right so we're going to go into render mode as you can see, it doesn't quite match up. Or you can even go into material and take a little bit faster. Yeah, and then if you unselect, yeah, you can see it doesn't really quite match up. So it's never really going to match up. I mean, it's close. We're at 135. But basically, you need infinite focal length. And we don't have infinite focal length unless we go to orthographic view. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to enable the first layer again. So now we have our cylinder again. I'm going to move the cylinder onto the third layer. So we disabled that. The reason I labeled that layer is I want to grab my camera back. And the camera, you can actually go into orthographic view. And since we're changing this pretty drastically, I'm going to uh, save a new document. So now we have an orthographic. And orthographic, you can't, there's no real, I'll show you the 3D view here. There's no real position to the camera. Um, I mean, you can position it however you want, but it doesn't really matter because it's always just the same. See, I'm changing the, the, where the camera looks. I mean, you know, relative to this, if I rotate it around, you know, if I can move that like that, but that doesn't change anything. What you have to use is the orthographic scale like this. Actually, I will go so we can actually see what we're doing. Do that. And that doesn't actually change the camera's position, but you can see it changes, changes this kind of shape. So there we go. So I'm going to get it to about the frame. And you can see it's weird because there's no perspective at all. But what it allows you to do is if I do project from this view, it should look perfect. And that is correct. It does look perfect. And you rotate it. 
And that doesn't look perfect, but we can get that. Let me just tab out. So you can see, if you do an orthographic view, it will look perfect. You can actually get a full alignment. So yeah, uh, Alt-A. So we can actually animate that in real time. I'm not going to render this. Um, okay, I lied. I totally rendered it. Turns out OpenGL rendering, super fast. So anyway, hope you found that interesting. Hope you learned something. If you did, hit like, hit subscribe. So you can probably tell I'm trying to get back into these things. Make some nice simple ones that can hopefully teach a few cool tricks. So enjoy Blender and make something awesome. All right, have a good one.